This is Dr. Pamela Weibel, and I am reporting on a major win for physician mental health. Three senators are now demanding that the Department of Justice investigate medical boards' illegal mental health questions. I have just published this on my blog, and there is a letter to the Department of Justice that I would like to read to you, and you are welcome to download it on my blog, idealmedicalcare.org. Three U.S. senators demand DOJ investigate medical boards for their illegal mental health questions that violate physician's ADA rights. So an attorney just notified me of this letter that was submitted to the DOJ citing my only peer-reviewed journal article on physician-friendly states for mental health, a comparison of medical licensing boards. This article documented the widespread mental health discrimination by medical boards also on my website with 142 very interesting comments. Or download the original document with citations here. To the United States Senate, Dear Attorney General Merrick Garland, Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark and Disability Rights Section Chief Rebecca Bond. I write to encourage the Department of Justice to extend its investigations to offenses under the American Disabilities Act to include the practices of state medical license boards. Many of these boards ask physicians about their mental health and substance use or addiction history beyond what is necessary to fulfill the purpose of screening physicians for current debilitating cases of mental illness and substance use or abuse. These questions both discourage many applicants and licensed physicians from receiving care that they need, and they violate Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act, which forbids public entities from discriminating against qualified individuals on the basis of disabilities, including mental health conditions. I know that you share my goals of protecting health privacy, encouraging a robust medical workforce, promoting mental health care, and enforcing the ADA. So I write to ask you to prioritize prioritize this concern by issuing DOJ guidance and holding state medical boards accountable. States oversee the qualifications of their physicians as part of the power to protect the health, safety, and welfare of its citizenry. But some of the questions that many state medical boards ask of physicians on their initial licensure exams and renewals are, according to the American Psychiatric Association, the American Medical Association, and the Federation of State Medical Boards, irrelevant to assessing current ability to practice. In fact, several peer reviewed journal articles estimate that two-thirds of state medical boards violate Title II of the ADA with personal taxing and unnecessarily broad questions about doctors' psychiatric history. The repercussions are not just a matter of law, but they also inform the practices of hospitals, health plans, and malpractice insurance companies and impact the medical well-being of physicians and, I will add, have led to physician suicides as a result of physicians fearing getting the help they need need for a job that's obviously very tough. A 2019 study, they are referencing mine, looked at initial medical licensing processes in all states to determine if qualified applicants who report mental illness experience discrimination and to identify the most physician-friendly states for mental health. The authors ranked Alaska as the worst of all states when it came to invasiveness of mental health questions on initial licensing applications with 25 yes or no questions, including have you you ever been diagnosed with, treated for, or do you currently have, followed by a list of 14 mental health questions, including depression, seasonal affective disorder, and any condition requiring chronic medical or behavioral treatment. The District of Columbia asks two questions, both unrestricted in time and the second broad and subjective given that one anonymous and unsubstantiated complaint can lead to a physician health program referral and undermine a doctor's career. Have you ever entered into a monitoring program for purposes of monitoring your abuse of alcohol, drugs, or other controlled substances? And have you ever entered into a monitoring program for purposes of monitoring your professional behavior, including record keeping, billing, boundaries, quality of care, any other matter related to any other matter? Can you believe that? Any other matter related to the practice of your profession. Georgia's application does not directly ask impairment or mental health questions, but requires three separate peer references to answer whether the physician has or had in the past any mental or physical illnesses or, check this out, personal problems that interfere with their medical practice. Personal problems are open to interpretation and there's no indication that any assertions contained in these references must be substantiated by actual evidence. These kinds of questions go far beyond conditions that could impair qualified individuals and may require comprehensive disclosure of one's medical and professional history. Even 
even though physicians face an inordinate amount of stress, their burnout rate is 50%, twice the general working population's level. Many avoid seeking mental health support due in part to these questions. In one survey of women physicians experiencing mental health difficulties, 44% of respondents who did not seek treatment cited these licensure questions as a reason why. In another survey of surgeons who experienced suicidal thoughts over the previous year, 60% said the questions would make them more reluctant to seek help. Physicians have had one of the highest suicide rates of any profession, and the pandemic has exacerbated suicide risk factors. Troublingly, there have also been reports of unwanted mental health support, i.e. punishment, or assessments as physicians have reported retaliatory inquiries into physical, mental, or emotional health and referrals to impaired practitioner programs. The DOJ oversees professional licensing bodies and has previously intervened when those bodies violated Title II of the ADA. For example, in 2014, the DOJ advised the Vermont Human Rights Commission about the unlawful nature of questions by state law boards about mental health history. Later that year, the DOJ investigated the Louisiana State Law Board for questions that violated Title II of the ADA. The DOJ also staked out a similar position in the case of state medical boards, writing in a 1993 amicus curiae brief before the U.S. District Court for the District of New Jersey that the New Jersey Board of Medical Examiners focus on past diagnoses and treatment of disabilities rather than conduct cannot be deemed justified. Nevertheless, to our knowledge, the DOJ has yet to open an investigation into a state medical board for violating Title II. I urge the DOJ to investigate state medical board's compliance with the ADA. The DOJ should also issue guidance on 28 CFR paragraph 35.130 to clearly state that state medical boards cannot ask inappropriate medical licensing and application questions, especially questions related to mental health history. In the interim, I ask that you provide me with complete answers to the following questions by March 16th, 2023. Does the DOJ have additional information beyond the scholarship mentioned above about the extent and different ways state medical boards may be violating Title II of the ADA? If so, please explain what it's learned. Has the DOJ's Civil Rights Division been engaged on this issue during the last several years? If so, please explain what work they are doing. Does the DOJ stand behind its 1993 amicus curiae brief in Medical Society of New Jersey versus Jacobs? If so, can it commit to publishing a version of it in the form of a regulatory guidance? How will the DOJ ensure that all state medical boards comply with the law and affected applicants or physicians have recourse? Has the DOJ examined similar issues when it comes to residency programs and hospital privileges? I also ask that you brief my personal office staff members, Jenny Katzman and Kevin Wu, on these questions. Thank you for your attention to this important matter. Sincerely, Ron Wyden, United States Senator from Oregon, who wrote this letter, signing on as well as United States Senator from Oregon, Jeffrey A. Merkley, my home state, and Corey A. Booker, who is the United States Senator from New Jersey, the state where I grew up. I call to action for anyone who is disturbed about this, who has been injured ever by a medical licensing board, a physician's health program, a hospital credentialing committee that has overreached their bounds by asking personal invasive questions that violate your confidentiality and privacy as a physician or health professional, please reach out to me at Ideal medicalcare.org. I am so happy that finally, after 10 years of working on this topic, that our federal government and the Department of Justice is finally addressing this topic. Thank you so much.